I want to talk about backgrounding programs for stalker cattle. Some of the alternatives that we've been looking at here in Western Beef Development Center. Typically, your objective when you're backgrounding calves is to grow them in a slow rate of gain, but it's been done in a dry lot pen. So utilizing forages, either chop feed or processed ration in a feed bunk fed to these calves over 100, 120 days in a dry lot pen. So our question was, can we background calves in extensive grazing systems? We know we can swath graze beef cows over the winter program, but can we swath graze or ask these calves to go out and consume annual forages in a field situation similar to beef cows? That was the big question. So we set out looking at two annual crops. First a cool season crop, which was our forage barley, cultivar ranger, and a warm season crop, which was golden German millet. So our the idea was to compare a warm season versus a cool season in a field situation, and of course comparing that to, to calves being fed in a dry lot situation. And of course we wanted to move these calves from the backgrounding program into the feedlot, finish them all the way to targeted gain, and then look at the carcass characteristics on these three groups of calves. So we had three groups of calves, three feeding systems, dry lot versus barley grazed versus millet grazed. All these crops were seeded in that springtime and we targeted to knock these crops down at a set maturity rate. Our barley was, was swathed at the soft dough stage and our millet was swathed at 30% heading. Our idea there was that we were trying to capture similar energy and similar protein in these two crops out there in the field. Once these cows are ready to go in that fall time period, we set up our field with electric fencing. We weighed our feed so we knew how much there was per foot of swath, so we could allocate feed on a three-day basis. We wanted to manage wastage out there with these calves. When you're going to background calves in a swath grade situation, you have to obviously look at some objectives and first you have to supply adequate protection from the wind so either natural shelter belt or portable windbreaks need to be in place. Good water supply, we had winter watering system in some cases you can haul water and the other issue too is certainly providing bedding to these young calves out there in those January months when it gets pretty darn cold. So looking at some of the results we found that in the first year in fact, our barley calves, calves out there consuming swath barley, gained 1.9 pounds a day. Our dry lot calves gained 1.6 pounds a day. And our millet calves only gained 1.3 pounds a day. We were targeting at 1.8 was our target based on our, our forage quality and our feed allocated in these three different systems. So our question was, why did these millet calves gain only 1.3? So the obvious choice there was looking at the quality. We found there was moisture differences from the millet to the barley to the chopped forage and the dry lot ration. In fact, our moisture was quite high in our golden German millet. So obviously these calves were consuming X kilo per day or X pound per day, but they just weren't getting as much energy and protein as the calves in the other two treatments. Having said that, however, a producer can take advantage of these gains the slow growth of these millet calves, for example, 1.3 pounds a day, and we saw that taking place once these calves hit the feedlot. In fact, we saw the millet calves doing what we call compensatory gain, and that they just gained really well once they hit the feedlot. In fact, in the first 30 days, they gained superior to the barley calves or the dry lot calves. However, at the end of the 200-day feedlot finishing program, all the calves had gained equal weights, and in fact, there wasn't any differences in the carcass characteristics looking at uh, different carcass grade data. However, what's the, what's the message that we can give producers on this particular program is that yes, you can manage calves uh, out in a backgrounding situation in a field by allocating feed on a set number of days, providing adequate wind protection, adequate water supply, and of course some bedding. And the real issue here was in our economics. When we calculated the difference between the three systems, we found that on average, the barley and the millet compared to feeding in a dry lot situation were 35% less in terms of, of cost to gain for those calves either grazing swath barley or swath millet. This is a huge savings to producers. We can see that in fact in the industry today feedlots are going to be taking in higher weighted calves versus bringing in calf fed. They're going to probably be bringing in type yearling type cattle just because they know they can put the pounds out in these summer grazing systems or these winter grazing systems cheaper better than in a dry lot situation.